five veterans and four veterans. And it has the greatest chance of keeping that promise to all those who have sacrificed so much. There are other organizations that are out there that utilize this same concept. Disabled American veterans, veterans of foreign wars, and I could go on forever and name all of them, but there is a lot of them that we're familiar with. Why this concept? Why buy veterans for veterans? And the simple answer is because it works. We speak the same language, whether it be navigating the VA system to get an appointment, understanding what a disability claim is, using a GI Bill benefit, or an outright crisis situation, veterans are the best advocate for another veteran because there is an automatic level of trust coming from your brothers and sisters because we've been there too. And sorry to pause, I'm just losing my, losing my spot. Okay. Peer mentoring has come a very long way across the world because it works. When it comes to our mental health, professionals have protocols that they have to follow. There's specific words, training that they should or not say. And as a peer and somebody who's been there, I don't have to follow those protocols and those words. And I usually follow that up with a story which I will do. Let me. So I'm going to give you an example. I actually recently had a veteran call me. And at that moment, he was not in a crisis situation, but in speaking to me about his frustrating situation, he closed his rant with, I just can't do it anymore. They would be better off without me and I'm done with this fucking life. And sorry to cuss, but I have to quote pro properly. <laughs> I immediately stopped him. Reminder, I am not a mental health professional. I'm just a sister that understands this veteran's thoughts and mindsets in that very moment. A mental health professional would have had to address this in a very specific way, following textbook protocols. But as his sister, I do not need to do anything, but just be that. So I said to him, did you hear what you just said to me? He responded, yes. So I said, are you thinking about killing yourself? He said, I think about it a lot lately, but I don't know. I said, is it in your mind today to take action on this? He said, no, I'm just frustrated and angry and ready to give up. So I said, can I ask you something raw and real brother? He said, yes. I said, you've spoke a lot in this conversation about your children and I hear your pride and your love for them. You have two daughters, 16 and 17 and a five-year-old son. That's what you've relayed to me, right? He said, yes. I said, they respect you and they looked up to you. Do they not? He said, yes. I said, so when you're thinking about ending it all, do you think about what will happen to them when you check out like that? He said, no, I've never really have. And I said, when we get in our heads like this, it's very hard to think about others and the aftermath if we do it, because we're all jacked up. Those children, they look up to you. You don't, do you not think that possibly if you go through with this, that they then look at themselves and say, wow, my dad claimed to love me and always be there for me. And when things got hard, he just checked out on me. I guess I'm not good enough to live for. He tells me, wow, I never thought about it like that. And that was pretty rough of you to say to me. I said, yeah, it is. And I'm sorry for being so real with you, but it's important for us to take that small moment as tiny as it may be to think of at least one person that's going to be deeply affected if we take that action. Because at the end of the day, it's not about us. It's about the effect of our life on those that love us and what we as human beings mean to them. So the, maybe the next time you'll be reminded that it isn't all about you in that moment. He goes, I'm so 
mind blown right now and not sure if I hate you or if I love you, but yeah, I totally get it. I also know that every time I get frustrated or upset, I probably won't give up because people need me in their life, even if I don't always believe it. I'm sharing this with you because not every story ends this way, but I did one thing a mental professional could never do. And I also went against every protocol and proper text that's out there about how to properly speak to someone in a crisis situation that's suicidal. Veterans are different. However, in my defense, I am not a counselor. I'm an outreach specialist. That is my job for a living. I'm a sister and I've had those same exact thoughts. So I can speak to him from experience, nothing more. That is what I did. That is what he needed at that moment. Maybe next time he's in his head, he will remember that this conversation that we had and he won't go through with it, or he'll be smart enough to reach out to that mental health professional because his sister in arms put that thought in his mind. Peer to peer mentoring works effectively. There's a shortage of mental health providers, not only in the VA, but across the country. There's a whole lot of veterans that have a shit show playing in their minds every day in and out while they're awake and while they're asleep. So having a peer there is vital in my book to saving lives. And that's what we do at Echo Vets. It's not only providing a place for camaraderie, for the shit talking that we do, the banter back and forth between branches, which I will insert here. If you've never been a part of that and listened, you don't have to be a veteran to understand how funny that that is. And you will laugh from the bottom of your belly. <laughs> But it is also the camaraderie, but it's also we're there to call in each other and call each other on our own bullshit. We're there to say that you matter to me. You signed the same blank check I did. Here's my hand. Take it. Let's figure this out together. Then we say to each other, I'm glad you feel better. Now get your butt out there and help that sister over there so she's not moving to her new house after her divorce all by herself. Or get over there and talk to that brother about his drug or alcohol use so we can get him off that crap. It's about giving a hand up and not out. And that's what we do. In real life or in second life, we actually do save each other's lives. And so I wanted to close with this and excited to show you our sim and what we do. Our freedom is not free. It's bought and paid for by our veterans, no matter what country we're in. On this day and every day, remember to think a veteran, the ones now serving in each of our countries, the ones that have served and the ones that have served and made the ultimate sacrifice so that we may enjoy freedom. I bless my God, my God blesses my brothers and sisters, not only today, but every day. Thanks guys. And I will open it up if anybody has any questions. Awesome. Oh man, I left you all speechless, didn't I? That's how I roll. <laughs>
And I just, I get real. Sorry, it's my passion. And I think once we go to the sim, you all will be able to see that. And I wanted to thank um, one of my leadership team, Taylor, for being here. Uh, she is our commissioner of outreach, actually, at the sim. And she does an amazing job. And she is a very great support to our veterans. And she's an Army vet as well. So. So if you want, we can head out if there's no other questions. And, and folks can an ask questions along the way, too. I'm sure those will come up. Yes, um, absolutely. Um, and then uh, I know Lear just dragged out a sign that has a link. Uh, I think it's Laurel to the um, Echo Vets. And I would like to put that, if it's possible, there was a video done by Draxor. Oh, fantastic. Um, for Linden Labs, actually, uh, Strawberry Linden wanted it, and so this was just released yesterday, or two days ago, rather. <clears throat> and it's a really great um, tour of our sim as well. If somebody can't make it or anything like that, it tells about what we do and why we're doing it. Fantastic. Oh, good. Some people saw it. That's awesome. So I will meet you guys there. Come on over. Okay, great. I'll hold up the rear here, and um, uh, and then when once I get there, uh, you know, we can pop over. But yes, the slurl is. I think just click the, and it's also up above. Lear, put it in the chat, and then you can also click the sign too. to our gateway. So, um, thus far, we barely make it here each month, but that's okay because we're just getting started. We've only been on the ground, I think, a month and a half maybe, maybe two months top. Two months. So, yeah, so um, we're really just getting started, but we have grown exponentially already um, because I think, uh, as actually, it was Midori Linden's idea. She's the one that came to me. You guys know Midori. Um, and she said, there's a lot of great veteran groups, there's a lot of great veteran sims, but none that are unique in this way. 
And so that's why we are doing what we're doing. And we are actually reach, we have reached out to many of the veterans organizations here in Second Life, and we have a lot of great partnerships um, that we have that we have um, formed. One of our leadership, actually, our our executive officer, Suda Northman, he runs the Legacy Vet Sim, and he is it's the Vietnam Veteran Sim. Which, if you've never been over there, um, to my left on the back board on the building there is the um, landmark. They have an actual replication of the Vietnam Wall there with all of the names, and it's amazing to see in Second Life. It's a wonderful thing. So we will start here. Um, as you see, the campfire, this was actually put together by our veterans. Um, this is one of our play favorite places to hang out. This is where all the shit talking goes on. Um, the banter, making fun of the Marines, tossing them crayons, doing what we do. <laughs> and, um, you know, the typical jokes and the banter. And as I said, anytime you guys are welcome. Uh, if you look at our map and you see a few people over here, I assure you that there's a lot of laughter going on. Um, we have our serious moments, but usually it's a lot of laughter. And uh, laughter is the key to us um, beginning our healing, most definitely. Um, there is a lot to see on this sim, and I will let you guys, after I give you the tour, just of this base area. Um, and, and uh, up in the sky um, on the video, it shows a lot of the aquarium and our gaming zone. Those are all things up in the sky. My main thing so that I don't keep you <laughs> forever because it would probably take 30 minutes easily to show you the whole sim and for everybody to teleport. Um, I'll just show you down in this area. So here we have our teleporter um, in this corner here, which is where most people land. This is my military story. Oh, please excuse me. But Karen for a dog, sorry. <laughs> she, she likes to yell at anybody who dares to walk by my house. <laughs> um, so I am very transparent. My real life name is Stacy Lee. Um, and every kiosk that you see uh, is clickable and will give you the note card this gives my real life story, my military story. Um, and I am transparent like that because it's important. Um, if I'm going to show other veterans that this is a safe place and that I am legitimate in what I'm doing, then I have to be transparent. And I will tell you, if anybody has looked at my profile, I'm a little over 18 years old now in Second Life. And up until maybe three years ago, there was maybe three people that knew that I was a military veteran. It wasn't a part of my life that I was proud of, and it wasn't a part of my life that I shared in Second Life. So for me to be this transparent, it's been insane <laughs> for me. So um, also our veterans can contact me in real life. They have my email, they have access to my um, phone number, everything. And that is because this is my passion and this is what God placed me on earth for is to serve my brothers and sisters. And I am therefore this in and out of Second Life. Thank you, Namara. Hello. So over here, uh, this is all of our, our directory and you can teleport directly from this board. And then over here is our civilian supporter jerseys. So um, I was explaining our jerseys have different colors. Our blue, royal blue, is for our civilians to show that they are a supporter of the Band of Brothers. This is actually a copy written design in the real world, and we did bring it to Second Life. Um, and so the only jersey that we sell is our supporter jersey because it is for donations towards our sim. Uh, we have a, of course, a little sim counter and our donation boards. And then I will bring you into the main hall here. In the entrance of the hall, in the entrance of our hall is our leadership team. We all have online indicators as well as mailboxes so that veterans, if they have a question and we're not available, they can drop that on us. We do check those a few times a day <laughs> and we make sure that we always get back to our veterans and take care of them whether it's something that's an urgent need or not 
that's what we're here for. Inside the main hall here is where we teach our suicide awareness classes, um, our PTSD awareness classes. We have a screen. Um, thanks to Dodge Three Beards uh, at the Edgeverse, he provided me the most amazing screen that I could upload my VA training for suicide awareness and um, be able to show slides. And so here's, um, I just felt this beauty, this building was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen and I had to have it. And so it became the main focus of our sim. Um, and this is where we have all of our classes. And in the video, you'll see a lot of it was filmed in here. So, <laughs> and we are putting together a weekly schedule where I will be teaching those classes and being available to um, veterans, family members, supporters, it doesn't matter. Anybody who's interested in learning more. Um, a little bit about what I was talking about on the sim uh, where we were just were at the nonprofits commons is suicide is suicide. It doesn't matter. It's a, it's a human being issue. However, veteran suicide is actually quite unique. Um, the way that we think the, the reasons why um, it can be a number of things, but being able to recognize a crisis or a suicidal intent in a veteran is many times quite different than it would be in a civilian because we are taught from day one to be tough, be strong, hold it in, suck it up, drive on. And so sometimes it's the smallest words and our suicide awareness training shows even civilians how if they ever come across a veteran in any part of their life, how to recognize that in a veteran. And so it's an effective class for anybody. And then we can come back out here <laughs> and we'll take a little walk here across the way. I'll give you guys a chance to catch up to me. <laughs> So here we have photo boards. This is the real life band of brothers. This is us at our best doing what we do, which is taking care of each other and doing our community service and uh, giving back to our communities, camaraderie, um, helping the kids, coming together. We do parades, Memorial Day, Veterans Day. We are at the cemetery and we go to every single grave at every cemetery in our area. Um, and if it takes us the whole day, that's what we do because no veteran is left without a flag and a memorial at every single one. We have our soldiers cross. Um, is there anybody here who does not know what a soldier's cross is? Thank you, Taylor, for being here, ma'am. Okay, great. So all of you know what a soldier's cross is. It is something that is very meaningful to all of us. Um, and it's a representation of those that we have lost. Uh, on the battlefield, when we lose a brother or a sister, we take their boots, we take their M16, and we take their Kevlar, and we face the M16 down inside of their boots and we place the Kevlar on top, and that is called a soldier's cross. And so you will see that in a lot of veteran um, things. So a couple of these pictures that are coming up are uh, me. There's me on the left there, Moody. That's my maiden name until I got married a year ago. There's me on the right. So, But there's a lot of just photos, and they're really fun to look at. And it just shows us. And, of course, the kiosk in the middle gives you the backstory of Band of Brothers and how we came about and um, how we became an organization and what we do a little bit in more in detail. Um, and the same mission that we have in real life, we have brought that to Second Life and it's very important to me. Um, the kiosks here in the plaza, same thing. This is vital information that is kept up to date by me um, as an employee of the, the Veterans Affairs Department. Um, of course, these would more so go towards our U.S. military veterans. 
uh, but family members can get great information from these as well. Again, every single one of them is clickable. What is shown on the face of the kiosk is where the, the information that they can give. I have put it as much in layman's terms as possible as if I'm speaking to somebody face to face. Yet at the bottom of every one of those kiosks, it also provides my real life information should they have any further questions. One of the ways that our veterans here in Second Life earned their red, white, and blue jersey that I'm wearing um, is of course by being on our leadership team, but also by being here in our plaza and being present when our brothers and sisters land, welcoming them to the sim, showing them the kiosks, answering questions as best as they can. I don't expect everybody to have the knowledge that I do of the VA system, but they can bring them here and show them. And that's how they earn their red, white, and blue jersey because they're giving back to their brothers and sisters. Um, straight in front of me is the Echo Vets Mall. The downstairs, we have stuff for purchase. Um, which everything has a portion that goes back to the sim. And then upstairs we have um, good freebies, not crappy ones, because I am very adamant about that, um, for our hopefully soon gateway. And then the building to the right is going to be a bunch of kiosks that, that <laughs> shows our, our new, newly um, resed veterans, you know, the typical how to walk, how to fly, how to use your chat. And the upstairs portion is a little more advanced, which is like changing wind light settings and their graphic settings. Um, and we have a set aside group. Yes, I've tried to make sure. And actually the new PACT Act, which is a very big, big issue. Um, I've had a lot of veterans that have been very interested in the PACT Act. And then I am actually available on the sim usually in the evenings and on the weekends when I can be because I, I do have a real life full time job at the VA doing exactly this um, and events that I have to do. But that's why I have an amazing leadership team that is always tries to be here for everybody. So um, the way that I am now facing this way will walk um, to my left and all the way to the end of the sim. We have. The rest of the area down here is gardens, um, just nice places to relax. We have a wonderful Seven Seas fishing area where that's probably the best smack talking that you'll ever see other than at the campfire <laughs> is everybody fishing together. I don't know what it is about us best, but we love to fish and talk crap. <laughs> and so uh, I will not drag you over there, but I will drag you this way and we will cut right through the grass and it's okay, you can walk on our grass. We have, we have uh, a lot of veterans that come and mow it. Then here is our parade grounds because you can't have a bunch of vets together without a parade grounds. It's what we're used to. It was always go police call the parade grounds, go clean up the parade grounds. But this is where we do events. We did a 9-11 speech here and, and a memorial event. We have a Black Hawk, a MIG, we have a deuce and a half truck or a five ton truck. So we have lots of cool stuff over here. It's just a, a really cool place. And, a, and amazingly, a lot of our veterans crack up when they come over here. They're like, oh my gosh, I feel like I should be standing at attention waiting for taps to play because we designed it to look pretty much other than bleachers to be a, uh, <laughs> to be, um, a parade grounds, uh, an events area. So they, I, of course I had to make it kind of cute, but we have a lot of um, our veteran um, silhouettes, um, some that were made for us, some that I made myself. Um, I had a heck of a time in, in Second Life, as I do in real life, um, <laughs> finding women veterans silhouettes. So I just had to make some myself. Um, there's not a whole lot of us, but uh, it's a big joke. You know, um, when a woman veteran is wearing a combat hat, most people don't know what to say or they won't say anything or as my husband so uh is so used to they will thank my husband for letting him letting me wear his hat <laughs> so as women veterans we've come a long way but um 
there's still a thing in society that they're not quite used to us being combat vets. Yet we've been in combat since the Revolutionary War. So, <laughs> uh, so we're going to come around the corner here. And of course, we added the Space Force flag now that we have our Space Force as our sixth branch of the military. We have a walkway here, which was the original intent of this was to be the landing zone where our veterans would walk down the walkway with all of the United States flags. But we now we just have it here for cuteness, <laughs> for, for pride. And then over here to the left of that, uh, the gentleman that has been in Second Life probably close to as long as I have, um, Shepard, he created this beautiful fountain for us, um, which is our soldier's memorial fountain, which we have um, also photographs playing above it and then some nice places to sit and just reflect. And uh, he did a beautiful job. So uh, we really appreciated that awesome donation from him. Yes, I think it's just beautiful. Um, and I just, I love the, that I'm, I'm very careful about scripts, but this one, this is worth it. So, <laughs> so um, we have some nice little campfires and stuff like that. Oh, I am so sorry, Lucena. <laughs> I just walked right into you, ma'am. And then really from here, um, I did create a vet center building um, and it, Pretty much, and you're welcome to go in. I have a couple of memorial areas in there. Um, we have it set up to look like a group room because at the vet center in real life, our primary job, um, and again, a kiosk to tell you about the vet center, but our primary job at the vet center is yes, we are VA healthcare, but we don't have doctors and nurses. It's not a clinical atmosphere. It is a counseling center. And our, um, our priorities are PTSD counseling, military sexual trauma counseling, bereavement counseling, and family counseling, and then outreach, which I am the outreach specialist for my vet center in Lake Havasu. And um, that is why I was able to marry um, the concept of the Band of Brothers w along with all the information from the VA. Um, and from here, it's just wander around and check it out because I've shown you all downstairs there is a teleporter, so you don't have to go all the way back to the main center if you don't want to. That's right here next to Lyra. Um, and you just click on it, and it'll take you to the place that you would like to see. Um, if, if anybody has questions, please, by all means, ask away. I am an open book. Uh, and uh, I'd be happy to answer anything. <laughs> Um, so Stacy, is your workplace, does, do they know the, this virtual, um, space too? Like, is there like yes, a connection? Yes, they do now. I think seven years ago, the Seattle, Washington VA clinic, they started a SIM. Um, and I was aware of that SIM, um, because of course I work at the VA. Um, but the, uh, the information that they provided was not kept up to date and I was quite unimpressed as were most of the veterans that would go there to, to, to look at things and so I, I didn't go. I didn't bother. Um, I didn't refer anybody there and so it's something that's been in the back of my mind but uh, honestly I, I just this was not an idea that I ever would have thought of until Midori brought it to me um, because it meant opening myself up opening up my story and I wasn't sure if I was was ready for that and and I am now uh, when I made the decision to to do that that's what I did and we have some amazing amazing veteran groups here you know real life US military veterans the vet the veteran center there's a place called the veteran center um, we do a lot here and my goal was to be here but not replace what they've already been doing for many years in second life was to add to it and and that i think we've been successful in adding to what has already been started here um so yeah 
Yeah, and the Vet Center in real life, yes, they are aware of it. Um, our director, Mike Fisher, uh, you can look him up online, uh, great guy. He showed up at our office um, on, an, on an inspection tour. There are um, 385 vet centers across the country, and we have 85 mobile vet centers uh, because we did start off as an outreach program. Um, and he is, the, he is in charge of those. He reports to the Secretary of Veterans Affairs. Um, and he came and we were doing our whole inspection. And of course, as a low man on the po totem pole, you're, you're a nervous wreck that the big dog is there. And he looked at me and he said, so tell me about this second life stuff. And I almost crapped my pants right there. <laughs> so who told you, you know, so, um, he had me bring up my private, um, yes, he brought up. Uh, I brought up my private laptop and I logged into Second Life and showed him what I was doing here. And he was so impressed. Uh, one of the things that he would like to do is a couple of our counselors are going to uh, come to Second Life. One has already created um, to see if they can offer counseling services for some of our veterans here since we are able to follow HIPAA in world by being able to have private phone calls and private group calls. Uh, so that's something that they are very strongly looking into uh, and maybe possibly dropping an actual vet center sim right next to Echo Vets. Uh, Lucena, actually, my friends brought me here. <laughs> um, again, many of those people have never known that I was military, um, just a few. Um, what brought me to Second Life was I had gone through or was going through a very bad divorce from a veteran as well. Um, two people with PTSD just can't be together. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. Uh, and... I did not date, I did not do anything but take care of my three children, and this was my socialization. And I speak about that through uh, on the video. Um, this was my safe space. Um, and so many people don't realize how many veterans are actually here. Because many times, going out into civilian society, especially when you come back from a wartime situation, traffic is so loud and even traffic is a trigger for PTSD if you've been in the Middle East and know what we have to do while we're there to get through traffic. Um, traffic is so loud, loud bangs, loud noises in, in going into a building uh, within 10 seconds, you know where every exit of that building is and you have to sit where you are facing them and you have a plan A and a plan B on your escape route should anything go down. I mean, this is just how veterans think. And in Second Life, this is a place that we come, we can socialize at our own pace. We can take baby steps to going out into society again and not be so scared or so hyper vigilant um, there was a time when there was, if there was this many people standing around me, I would probably have a panic attack, um, even in second life. But now the beginning baby steps for me were second life. And then from there it was society and here I am. And the other side of that is we have veterans that are not mobile. They're bedridden or they're in wheelchairs. We have a wonderful couple that she is in a, she's bedridden in Washington and he is bedridden in a veteran's home in Pennsylvania. But they come here and they can go rock climbing together and they can spend the day together and they can date each other and they can be friends and they can ride a bike and go sailing and all these things that they can't do in their real life because they're in a bed. Um, so, and that's important. It's important. It's that socialization 
that they can't have in real life, whether it be their choice or not their choice. And yes, gentle, very true. Um, gentle, the, the only research that they're doing is learning from me and what I'm doing. Um, I hope that this becomes bigger than me because I'm just a small fry and I'm okay with being a small fry. Um, I'm a small fry with the Echo Vets group. Um, and I'm okay with that. And I, but I would love it to be so much bigger than I am. And I would love to see 20 Sims here for veterans and different things on each one and counseling going on and people, people being able to log into second life because they have an appointment with their VA counselor, uh, that can happen. And, and I would love to be that person that put that first foot forward and said, let's do this. No, <laughs> no, I'm actually from a town called Santa Maria, California. Uh, that is where Echo Vets originated, actually on the central coast of California. And uh, last Christmas, my husband and I moved to Lake Havasu, Arizona. And so I am living where I am retiring. Uh, I love Lake Havasu. Um, and when he brought me here, the second day I realized how many veterans were here and the very first thought in my mind was I could make a difference here and that kind of was that led to the trajectory of us changing our entire lives because we both grew up in California we've always lived there um, and we picked up our whole lives and came here and there is a places all over that have great VA resources the VA has gotten a lot better but I have um, always said anybody that knows a veteran that has an issue or is not sure of something, my phone number is out there for the world to see. My email is out. Always send me a note card, send me an offline. I will always find that resource no matter where it is in the world. Um, no, I didn't. Oh, no, I, have, I did not know Kevin Holloway. No, I did not, Zinni. I apologize for missing that. Oh, Mary Lou, come on up. You know Havasu is awesome, too. <laughs> thank you, Lear. Oh, and thank you, Zinni. I appreciate that. I will say, though, if you haven't seen the aquarium, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> and uh, if anybody wants to join the group as a supporter, uh, I think it probably offered you automatically... Uh, but we will put out our schedule. We have a calendar in the plaza that tells what we do. We do game nights. We do, And like I said, if you're ever just sitting around SL and you want to hang out with a bunch of crazy veterans because that's what we are, come on over. <laughs> yes, I've heard of him. The aquarium is up in the sky. Um, you just click on the teleporter right here and it'll give you a list of everything that's up in the sky. Um, I'll tell you a funny story. When you click on the teleporter, there's a thing there called Fort Echo. Uh, Soldier Wave Rider, if you don't know of him, he is an amazing human being. Uh, he's involved in all of the veterans groups. He is an Iraq War veteran, and he has multiple TBIs. And when we first dropped the sim and got it uh, created, he asked for a tour of the sim. And one of the problems with his TBI is he forgets things five minutes later. God love him. He's 44 years old, just a sweetheart. So he would grab somebody else from leadership and say, hey, could you give me a tour of the sim like 10 minutes later? So that first day, he had maybe 12 tours of our sim, and we all just fell in love with them. Cause, and then I messed him up, and I redid the whole sim. <laughs> so when he had just gotten... <laughs> when he had just gotten used to it it was like i can't believe you changed everything um so one of the things is um with with military soldiers back in the day the guys would bring girls that they met civilian girls to the barracks right to hang out and hang out with them and stuff and so one night he was sitting there and he goes you know you remember when us guys would bring girls to the barracks yeah play pool and do like stuff like that in the day room and then bring them to their rooms. He goes, we should have a barracks so I can bring a girl here. And it was this big joke. We all were laughing. And so that night after he went to bed, I built him a barracks and I call it Fort Echo. 
so that is how that came about and he loves to hang out up there he goes up there and plays pool and ping pong and it's and it's i built it like an old world war ii barracks with the open bunks and the foot lockers but he still it's it's his it's his own barracks but it's for everybody so yes you just click on it and click where you'd like to go and it'll take you there and thank you for that link Yes, Lycan uh, was very much a part of everything, Shiloh, yes. Thank you so much for putting up with me and uh, for honoring me with your guys' presence. I really appreciate it. And I know that I put in for an office over at the nonprofit. Um, I yes. haven't heard anything back, but doggone it, I, I would love to get over there and... and be available for people as well um, and be very much a part of the community. And I, I truly appreciate you guys welcoming us here at EchoVets as great as you have. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I actually did recognize your name. Yeah. <laughs> it is forever. Yes, thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes, and you're welcome to I am me. Anything like that. I, I am like I said, I, I'm I try to be as available as possible. Um I have about I'll be online for about another hour or so and then I am heading with my service animal and my husband. We're going to the um the uh senior living home today and bringing them some operation gratitude boxes and just being there for the veterans that there's like eight or nine of them there and just giving them a hug and letting them pet my my crazy dog and and just giving them some fellowship so Sure. yes yes that's what we do in real life we go visit those places and we make sure that they know they're not forgotten and um we have actually a group um a team on echo vets in real life that that is um and they take the spouses because we have a spouses group as well and so they all take turns so that they're not seeing the same people over and over and they have a little sign up sheet and say, okay, this group is going this week and, and they try to go once or twice a week to those places then and, and just be there for them. And we also will walk through the hospital as well and ask the nurses to let us know if they have veterans there that they, and they'll guide us to the room. And we just go in and just, just talk to them and tell them hi and let them know we're thinking of them and ask them if there's anything they need.
again, everybody, thank you so much for being here. Yes. It was my honor. And happy Veterans Day, everybody, no matter what country you're in. <laughs>